So response inhibition is the first one. I mean, it's basically impulse control, um, capacity to think before you act. Uh, and this one, Russ Barkley, who's probably done the, the, the most comprehensive description of the emergence of executive skills in very young children, talks about seeing this one around age four to five months of age. Uh, and, and it shows up first as, as, a, as a respond, don't respond, you know, sort of a binary system there. That, that, that's what the baby has available to them. They can respond to what's happening around them or don't respond. And if they choose not to respond, then they're showing some kind of response inhibition. So if a stranger is trying to get a baby to smile and they're, they're, they're not jumping to the bait, then you might see that might be an indication of some response inhibition. Um, this is, this is a critical skill because if you don't have this one, you're not going to have the others. You need response inhibition in order, obviously, to develop things like sustained attention and planning and organization and all of those things. Um, working memory, I, I talked about that with respect to the cookie problem, the ability to hold information in memory while performing complex tasks. Um, in terms of an academic task, the most obvious uh, working memory task we can think of is giving kids an oral math problem to solve in their head. Um, especially if it's a multi-step problem, you know, which is one of the tasks that I frequently do with kids. Uh, and you, you can see them break down at any number of points in the process of solving a, 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 a complex math problem uh, because they've reached the limits of their working memory. Um, you know, if it's a two-step problem, sometimes I see kids who figure out the answer to the first step and then give that as the answer to the question, uh, forgetting that, wait a minute, that wasn't what the question was asking. Um, they have to remember the precise numbers. Sometimes they have trouble remembering that. They have to remember the procedure to use. They have to remember the order, where they are in the procedure. Uh, and then they have to remember to go back and say, is, is the answer I'm giving, does it make sense, given the problem? Um, but in fact, every single task we ask kids to do, both at home and in school, requires working memory. Uh, and when you see kids with pretty significant working memory impairments, you realize how important it is as a skill. Uh, and very often, because I work a lot with kids with attention disorders, um, lots of times people assume that if they could pay attention, they could remember. So it's just a question of correcting the attention problems and then they'll be fine. But I see a fair number of kids with ADD who, in addition to attention problems, also have working memory problems. Um, and I see that because I'm working with them in a quiet office, I can, and when I'm asking them those math problems or I'm giving them a string of numbers and asking them to repeat after me, they're looking at me very carefully, they're thinking really hard, and I watch like on digit span where they have to say a string of numbers. They remember the first three and then they tail off. It's like they can't even hold five numbers in head long enough to get it out. Uh, and that's under the best of circumstances. That's not with distractions or other things going on or, or other thoughts running through their head. So, uh, um, you know, I, I urge people to consider working memory separate from other problems with attention.